Hi, my name is Pat Swearingen, and I teach art to first through fourth graders at Wichita Collegiate School. This is a really fun age to teach because they believe, like Picasso and I do, that all children are artists. Today I want to talk to you about a skill that I think all children need to have, and that is cutting with scissors. You might think that's just not a big deal at all, but from my perspective, it really is. Last week, we had um, first graders laboring over the task of making jack-o'-lanterns. Of course, we didn't use any patterns, but instead we folded and cut to make our own shapes. And what I needed them to be able to do was take a piece of paper, fold it, giving them a line of symmetry where the fold was, and then cut a shape that has two sides that are the same. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Take a piece of paper and fold it so that you have a line of symmetry down in the middle, and then you cut away from the line of symmetry and return to the line of symmetry. You end up with a shape that has two sides the same. It has a line of symmetry. And this works really well for making the pumpkin itself or for making the mouth. And even for some children, then they used it for the nose. Some children, they used it Other for the times nose. We needed to have Other times, we needed to have ruined. shapes that were ruined. not connected. So you still fold to get that line. But this time, when you cut, you cut off that line of symmetry. And this gives you two shapes that are the same size, but they're not connected. What I found is that children just haven't had enough opportunity cutting with scissors, and they only come to me for one hour a day, so they're not going to get enough practice just by coming to art. So I'm hoping that at home you can give them opportunities to do this. You could have them just cut pre-drawn lines, but that's not really what I'm after. Children get a whole different feeling out of cutting something that they've created versus something that someone else has created. So I'm hoping that you'll just let them fold and experiment, and you would just kind of stand back and not be judgmental, and you would just enjoy the experience. One thing I want you to do is be sure you find a pair of scissors that they feel comfortable with. A lot of times we give little kids little bitty scissors, but in reality their hands are too big, and it's just, they don't have very good luck with that, nor do I. It'd be better to give them a medium-sized scissor and let them cut with that. The other thing is you don't want to give them paper that's too flimsy. Like, we ha all have computer paper, but honestly it doesn't have enough body, so you're not going to get much from that. It would be better to invest in some construction paper that has some thickness to it. So this is the end of my presentation, and remember my name is Pat Swearingen. I teach first through fourth grade at Wichita Collegiate School. If you have any questions you want me to explain further, or if you just want me to give you other ideas, you can look on my blog, which is called artusmart.net. Thank you for watching.